G'day Gear Junkies, Jason here. A few months ago, I did a video about the progression of boss phases. And what I thought I'd do is to do similar type videos on all of the major boss series of pedals. So today we're gonna to be looking at their line of compressors that they've put out since the late 70s. I'm only gonna be looking at the ones that were designed for guitar, so I won't be doing any bass compressors today. And we're only looking at the ones in the compact pedal line. I'm not looking at any multi effects or anything like that. Before I begin, if this content interests you, please show your support by subscribing. From the mid 1970s onwards, compression starts to become a fairly popular effect thanks to the success of the MXR Dynacomp. Now, all of the other manufacturers that are around at that time, so Maxon, Ibanez, Boss, Skytone, they all start to bring out their own compressors. In 1977, Boss launched the Compact Series with three pedals, the OD1, SP1, and PH1. Now, the following year in 1978, they bring out four new pedals. One of them was this, the CS1 compression sustainer. Now this is unique in boss pedals because it is one of only two pedals to have a massive big toggle switch in the middle. The other one was this, the TW1, which came out that same year in 1978. That was an idea that was then scrapped after 78 and no other boss pedals came out with this big toggle switch in the middle. CS1 here is unique amongst BOSS compressors for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's the only one that processed the signal using photocouplers. Now, the problem with that is that it was only capable of very slow attack times. So that's not going to sound good in all types of music. Uh, apparently, country players really liked it for that reason, but uh, it really does limit the workable range of this particular pedal. It's also the only uh, one that ha to have two different modes. It's got normal mode and treble mode which is what the toggle switch is for. When you turn on treble mode, it's like it cuts a bit of bass and really accentuates those upper frequencies. So that's really great for all your chicken picking. Yeah, I know I'm not good at chicken picking. Another interesting thing about this pedal is that the volume control is quite weak. You really have to slam that level up to about three o'clock to get unity gain. So if you've got one of these and you're having to run it hot like that, it's not broken. That's just the way this pedal is. So this pedal here has all the hallmarks of an early Boss pedal. So it's got the silver screw on the bottom. It's got the rounded enclosure. If you open up the inside, it doesn't have a serial number. It has a four digit batch number. Uh, when I dated it, this one is uh, I think November 1980. So the silver screws start to disappear about early 1981. And in fact, this pedal itself was discontinued uh, in 1982. In 1981, Boss released the successor to the CS1, which was of course, the CS2. Now, these two pedals overlap for about a year before this one goes extinct. But it was about this time, sort of 80, 81, where Boss started to update a number of their designs and go from using a two knob format to using a three knob format. And this pedal was no different. 
Internally, this pedal is very different to the CS1. For starters, they get rid of the photocouplers and they use something called a voltage control amplifier. Now this processes the signal a lot quicker, which means that you get a lot faster attack times. Not only that, but they dispense with the switch and replace it here with an attack dial. So you can actually dial in the amount of attack that you want. So you can have it super fast or you can have it slower if you like. The CS2 here is undoubtedly one of the greatest compressors ever made. It was used by Dave Gilmore and also The Edge from U2. Uh, in this magazine, it rates it as the 16th greatest pedal ever made, of any kind that is. So that's a huge wrap for this. Now, these were only made for a short period of time between 81 and 86 when they were discontinued. That means that its entire life was made during the Japan era. So if you ever find one, they are all made in Japan which obviously increases the value. I've said this before, but the CE2 here is just about my favorite boss pedal and one of my favorite pedals, period. It's certainly my favorite compressor. I really love that attack range. I just find it to be very, very musical and it really helps to fatten up your tone and make those notes really pop. Here's a quick comparison between the CS1 and CS2 to show you how different these two pedals are. Here's my bass tone. I am playing my standard Telecaster through the top boost channel of my AC30. It's a little bit overdriven. Okay. Yeah, the attack on the um, on the CS1 is a lot slower. Uh, the CS2, I think, just is a bit more lively. Uh, it just, I don't know, the, the frequency response on it just seems a bit more uh, well-rounded for guitar. I just think that the CS2 is just a more well-rounded compressor. It, it, you still get the spank of the top end, but you've got all the lows there. Whereas when this is not in treble mode, you do lose a lot of that top end. So you, you kind of need that sometimes. Yeah, I really do think that this is a worthy successor to the CS1. I think it's a better all-round pedal for sure. From 1983 onwards, Boss make four knobs the standard amongst their pedals. So they either had four controls like the HM2 here, or they'd have three controls and a mode selector like the OD2 here. In 1986, Boss decided to bring the CS pedals uh, in line with the four knob format and they released the CS3. The CS2 goes extinct uh, in the same year. Now, CS3 here also uses the uh, voltage control amplifier. The main difference is that it has a tone control. Now, early ones like this Japanese model here uh, sound quite similar to a CS2, but they changed the chip uh, in the early 90s, and so the modern day reproductions of this pedal are not quite the same. So I have a, uh, a brand new made in Malaysia one, which I'm going to compare to this one. For comparison's sake, what I thought I'd do is play through my Japanese CS3 from 1987 and also try playing through a modern day uh, CS3 made in Malaysia in the last year or so. Both of these pedals are in independent loops of the JHS switchback. So the green is the Malaysian one and the red is the Japanese one. 
Just switching between these two pedals without playing, I can tell that the Japanese one here is a lot noisier than the Made in Malaysia one, which tells me that they've reduced the noise floor uh, and or it could be something to do with the fact that this is pushing 40 years old. <laughs> I think there was a bit of a difference. I think that the Malaysian one just seems to be a bit flatter than the Japanese one. Yeah, the Japanese one just seems to have a bit more life in it. I might try turning up the tone on this and maybe the volume as well and see if I can get a similar sound. Yeah, by turning up the tone a little bit on the Malaysian one, I think it now sounds a bit more like the Japanese one. If I was going to use this pedal for some rhythm work, what I would do is turn down the attack to make it faster and maybe turn the compression down a little bit. Because by having this slow attack, you really get this, the notes really pop, but you don't really want that when you're playing chords. That sounds great for rhythm, I think that's fantastic. The CS3 here is one of the most common compressors found out there today. There's so many pros that rely on this for their compression sounds. And it's been produced at this point for nearly 40 years unbroken, which is, that's an amazing feat for uh, an effects pedal. <laughs> This particular one here was a little bit noisy. Now that's a common complaint amongst compression pedals. People say that they're too noisy. The fact is that a compressor will amplify any noise that's already in your signal. So uh, it doesn't just bring down your volume. It also brings up the volume uh, of the softest parts that you play. So it brings those two closer together. So by doing that, any sort of background noise that you've got going on is going to be amplified. So Boss don't bring out a new guitar compressor for the next 30 years, not until 2016 when they released the CP1X. Now the CP1X or any of the pedals that have X at the end are basically a digital, they're not a recreation, they're more like a reimagining of certain classic effects. So they have the DS1X, the OD1X and the CP1X. <laughs> Now this is a high quality multi-band compressor. It's incredibly musical. It's more like something you would find in a studio. You're able to 
compress really delicate guitar parts without squeezing the life out of them, which I think is really great. Um, it's a lot more subtle in some of its settings. You have a ratio knob here, um, which is, again, something you're more likely to find on a studio compressor, which really helps you to fine tune the amount of compression. <laughs> The only reason I bought this pedal was for the making of this video and I did intend to sell it uh, after I'd finished filming but the truth is I really, really like it and I, I, I think I'm going to have to keep it because it's a different style of compression to the CS2 for example. It's, it's just, it's incredibly musical, it's a lot more subtle and a bit more tweakable so I was super impressed with the CP1X. I'm just going to do a quick comparison between the CP1X and the CS3. I've set the compression levels and the attack about the same. Yeah, I think the CP1X is definitely a bit more subtle. This is the Japanese one. You can hear a difference in the noise floor when I uh, switch between them. There's just a bit more background noise with the CS3. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to Dane of Gear Acquisition Syndrome, which is an online store here in Australia on Gumtree. Now, I've bought several pedals off him over the years, including both of these, uh, the CS2 and my Japanese CS3. Uh, I've bought many of my Japanese collection off Dane, which are always in terrific nick and working perfectly. So if you want uh, very, very well priced and good quality uh, secondhand Boss pedals, see Dane of Gear Acquisition Syndrome. So that was a look at Boss guitar compressors through the years. I really want to know though what you think, which one of these is your favourite, which one do you absolutely swear by and will never leave your board, and or is this an effect that you'd never really got along with or you don't know how to use properly? Again, I would really like to know about that in the comments. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can support this channel by going to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store and buying some merchandise and or joining the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page. I've put links down in the description. Other than that, my name is Jason. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.